Hey, Christy, how you doing? Coach PJ on Wednesday morning. Uh, I want to preface this <clears throat> by saying, number one, this is going to be long. Uh, and number two, because this, this is our really our first official biweekly, uh, I always like to kind of set the tone for clients uh, and understand that the way that I coach clients uh, in the area of fitness and nutrition is just like my good athletic coaches uh, coach me growing up in, in a sport. Okay, so there's going to be times where I, I praise you, uh, times where I educate you uh, and adjust your mindset, uh, times when I give you tough love. Sometimes there's a combination of one or more of those in a bi-weekly. Okay, so never take anything I say to you hard or personally, whatever I say to you here, uh, just has one goal in mind, and that's to get you the best possible results uh, on your fitness journey. Okay, so never, never take anything personally. Okay, it's all for your benefit. All right. So that's that. Uh, let's start out. I want you to read that. I'll give you 20 seconds to read it. Okay, we got that. Good. I also want you to read this, if I can find it. Okay, got that. Good. We're going to come back to that. Let's uh, go into the actual stats. So, um, I took this back three weeks because that's basically when you started this. This is fantastic. Okay, no miss workouts in three weeks. Beautiful. That speaks to the... Uh, consistency and the process goals that I put up with that first little um, quote from Jordan Syed. Boom. Perfect. Nearly perfect. Over 90% compliance with your nutrition for three weeks. That's exactly where you need to stay. Okay. In a 30 to 31 day month, you can have three or four days that you go over your calories. Okay, the first three weeks, you nailed it. So round of applause to you. This is what is important. It's consistency, compliance, and worrying about the daily process goals and not outcomes. Especially when we're three weeks into this. We're just starting now to scratch the surface a little bit. Okay, you got me for a year, all right? You executed beautifully the first three weeks. That's what you need to be concerned with. Okay. Um, you need to give this 90 days with this type of compliance. All right. I always tell clients this. Until you have shown unreal compliance in that 90% range for 90 days, you haven't earned the right to complain about your rate of results yet, okay? If in 90 days um, you've only lost six pounds, then you can complain to me, all right? Until that, until that happens, we don't even worry about it, all right? If you focus on process goals, the outcomes will take care of themselves, all right? Now... Let me blow this up for you. First of all, I think you, you, you mistyped here. You mentioned in your instant message that you had dropped four pounds. Here it indicates you, you put in 185, you dropped two pounds. All right, I'm going to assume it was four pounds. I don't really care, though, because look at this. Two inches off your waist, and you, and you actually said that your waist measurement was registered at 34 and you changed it 
okay? I don't really care. I don't know if you mismeasured the first time or this time, or, or maybe you didn't do it at all. Let's assume you did drop two inches, possibly more. You have to understand, Christy, that is a massive drop. And it's indicative of positive body composition change. And it shows up in your pictures already. And we're three weeks into this. Three weeks, that's it. All right, a half inch in a measurement would be considered outstanding progress in a two-week period of time. You've dropped two, maybe more, in three weeks. That's like unheard of, okay? Same thing with the hips. You're down two inches on your hips in three weeks. So pardon my French, who gives a shit how much a random generating number device says you, you dropped when you're dropping these kind of inches? Same thing with the thighs. You're down an inch and a quarter to an inch and three quarters on your thighs in three weeks. This is about a look and a feel. Who cares what you weigh if you don't like the way you look? Okay? You need to get out of this scale jail thing and only gauging your results based on these numbers. Okay? You are only going to control the scale to a certain degree. I'll go back to what I put up before. This right here is 100% correct. You can control your consistency. All right. When you step on the scale, you have to understand that you are competing with about a half dozen, maybe more, factors in terms of what that number says on any given day, having nothing to do with true progress and body composition improvement. Did you eat more salt the day before? Did you eat slightly more carbs the day before? Um, not, not more calories than you needed, but maybe a, more, a higher percentage of carb. Did you eat later in the day, the day before you weighed in? Um, did you weigh in earlier than normal? Did you have a really hard workout the day before? Are you under a lot of stress? How has your sleep been? All of these things. Where are you in your menstrual cycle? That's a huge one, <laughs> by the way. You're competing with all of those factors every time you step on a scale. Every day. And you'll see, and I would encourage you to do this, weigh in daily, roughly the same time, under roughly the same conditions, every morning after you go to the bathroom before you eat and drink eat or drink anything jot it down in a spreadsheet or on a on a pen and paper on a notepad in your bathroom or use the happy scale app that is what i would recommend that's what i use that's why i encourage all clients to use you're looking for the, the trend in weight loss over time okay you're going to see even if you're 100 percent compliant that your scale weight is going to fluctuate anywhere from usually three to five pounds during the course of a week. If you ate the exact same thing every day, the same amount of calories every day, you would still see that happening. Okay. So with these bi-weekly check-ins, when you're, when you're weighing every two weeks, you're really hoping that you pick the right day to weigh in and that you have all those factors that I just talked about going in your favor. All right. This is why I like daily weigh-ins and looking at a trend and an average weight loss from the 1st of February to the 1st of March, for instance, and looking at your progress that way. Okay. So I would encourage you to do that. Now, that being said, let me give you a crash course in expectations because most people's expectations about how much weight they should be losing is completely screwed. It has absolutely no scientific basis behind it whatsoever. Let me tell you what good weight loss is. What we're looking for, and again, <laughs> depending on, on what factors you're battling, where you are in your menstrual cycle, but what we're looking for in the early stages of this program, on average, is a weight loss on the scale 
Again, this is on average. This is not every week. It's on average over a period of time. We're looking for a weight loss somewhere in the realm of a half a percent to 1% of your starting body weight per week on average. Some, some weeks it's none. Some weeks it's a percentage and a half. Some weeks a quarter percent, some weeks a half percent. On average, if you're falling in that half a percent to one percent range over a month, two month, three month period of time, you are doing fantastic. You need to get these notions out of your head. I need to be losing X amount of weight per week, or I'm failing, or this isn't working, or there's a better way. I, we, I always hear this from people got to lose two pounds per week. Well, you know, that might be true for a 250 pound uh, male. Two pounds a week might be realistic. A female under 200 pounds, not so much. Certainly not every week. All right. So you need to get these notions out of your head. I ask people this all the time. I, you know, I don't think I'm losing enough weight. You know, I only lost uh, three pounds in the last three weeks. Then I'll ask them, well, how much weight do you think you should have lost? They can't even give me an answer. Or if they do give me an answer, they, they, they can't tell me why that's the number. And the funny thing is, even if they had lost the amount of weight that, that they say they should have lost, they would, they, they would have said that that wouldn't have been enough either. Okay? Look at it this way, Christy. Let's say you lost a mere half pound a week for the next year. You'd be 25 pounds lighter. You take that, right? And... We're going to do a lot more than that, by the way, with, with great compliance. So you need to have a long game mindset. We are three weeks into this. That's it. Instead of saying, well, shit, I only lost four pounds in, in, the, la in the first three weeks. No, number one, that is in a very good range of compliance uh, in, in, in good, I should say, good responsiveness. I'm assuming you lost four pounds. That's what you said in the message. You lost 2.1% of your body weight already in three weeks. That averages out to be about 0.75% uh, of your starting weight per week. You're right in the middle of what is considered good responsiveness. Okay, and even if it was two, even if it was two pounds, who really gives a crap? Because your friggin' measurements are way down. If it was no, if it was no scale, wa scale weight loss, and your measurements were down two inches in your waist and your hips and an inch and a half in your thighs, that's progress, big progress, especially this early on. Okay, you need to understand. Progress is going to present itself in different ways at different times in this journey. Some weeks, it's going to show up more in the scale, and the inches don't move. Some weeks, it doesn't show up in the scale at all, but the inches move. Some weeks, it's a combination. Some weeks, even with great compliance, the scale might go up a pound, but the you, know, you, you shave a quarter inch off of a measurement or two. That's progress. Some weeks, nothing happens, but you, you take a picture or look in the mirror, and you're like, wow, I'm seeing some more contour in this area. That's progress. Okay, so it's going to present itself in different ways at different times. It, this is not going to be linear to where you go from 187 to 160 in, and you drop two pounds every week. Not how it happens. Everybody thinks their weight loss line should look like that. If you look at, I'm, I'm at a 45 degree angle from starting point straight down. No, what it looks like is something like this, down, down, bump up, bump up, steady, steady, down, steady, little bump, steady, down. It's still the same line down, it's just jagged. If you expect this to be linear, you're going to be sorely disappointed. And if every time you don't lose as much weight as you think you should be losing, which again, most people have absolutely no rational mindset or idea of how much weight they should be losing. But if every time you don't lose as much as you think you should have, and you say you get frustrated and impatient and say, screw it, 
I'm going to try something different or I'm going to go off the rails and, you know, eat like a jackass because I'm, I'm pissed off that I only lost a pound last week. You're going to get nowhere. All right. So your journey here, Christy, is going to be defined by three things. It's how do you handle when you've been deadly compliant, surgical, precise, doing everything right, and very little happens or nothing happens. How do you respond to that? Do you put your nose back to the grindstone and keep doing the daily process goals? Or do you get frustrated and impatient and say, screw it, and go look for something else or a fad diet or um, you just decide to drink a bottle of wine and eat a burger and fries because you're, you're pissed off? That's the first thing. Second thing, if you get off track with this for a day or three days or a week, do you have the ability to get back on track? Or do you use being off track as an excuse to stay off track? That's the second thing. And the third thing, this is key, is are you able to play a long game here and eliminate deadlines. That's key. There is no deadline here to when you have to arrive. This is meant to be a lifestyle and for life. So it doesn't matter if it takes you three months, six months, 12 months, 18 months. If you read, if you watch the little screen recording and video I sent out earlier this morning, I talk about that. Most client transformations that I have minimum of six months and more like 12 months and sometimes longer than that. You look at anybody on my Instagram uh, highlights that have made massive progress. It's all that time frame. Okay. We're three weeks into this period. Okay. So again, it, 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 it doesn't matter w w when you arrive. Okay. This is meant to be for life. There isn't a deadline. People, once again, I'm going to come back to this again, this right here, people that have weight loss goals, yep, you're fired up, you have good intentions, but if you have these numbers in your head that you have to be losing X amount and X amount of time, I can tell you unequivocally, people with that mindset fail, okay? I, I wrote yesterday, I, I wrote a whole thing about patience. My most successful clients are the, are the most patient. My least successful clients are the most impatient. Period. End of story. Because if somebody has in their head, I got to lose eight pounds a month. Well, what if you only lose six? What are you going to do? Quit? Because, you know, you didn't hit your weight loss goal. You're down six pounds. Extrapolate that out to six months, right? Be logical and rational with this, okay? So what I'm telling you is you've done a fantastic job thus far. You're down in pounds. Again, you said four pounds. I'm assuming that's it. Even if it's two pounds, I don't care. You're down a massive amount of inches. Most importantly, your compliance was huge, deadly on point, exactly where we want to see it, okay? That's what's important. We're three weeks into this. I'm going to keep saying we're three weeks into this, okay? So you, you've done a great job. What you need to work on going forward is your mindset surrounding this whole thing, okay? I need you to forget everything any of your bikini competitor friends told you about diet and exercise. I want you to forget everything you've watched on YouTube or saw in popular culture or, 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 or the media about working out and losing weight. This is why you have a coach. You need to filter out all of this other crap that's not evidence-based that other people are telling you or that you see and second-guessing things and second-guessing yourself and flip-flopping and thinking you need to be doing some other kind of workout or some other type of nutrition strategy. You don't. This is why you have a coach. I'm your filter. Okay. 
You listen to what I say and nobody else. Okay, and I'll continue to educate you, but you need to work on the mindset. Okay, and we'll get there. Trust me, Christy. Ninety percent of my clients have, have this first month is just like what it's what it's like with you right now, to where I have to do a lot of um, recircuiting of people. Okay, long game mindset. All right. So, what I've done. Um, real quick, I have tweaked your meal plan slightly, very slightly. Um, let me bring that up for you. Bear with me. Okay, so I took your calories down a little bit. You'll note in the meal plan template, um, I dropped the carbs in the fruit in meal two. Drop the rice amount slightly in meal three. Okay. Those are the only two changes. So our calories are now down to about 1690, 1689. Um, carbs are down slightly. You're actually under a gram of carb per pound of body weight, and that's really it's as low as it needs to be for quite some time. We got our protein remaining high uh, at around 170 grams. So again, these are the two numbers you're focusing on. You're not going over that calorie amount 90% of the time. That means uh, 26 to 27 days a month, you're not going over this calorie amount, and you're going to be mindful of trying to get in nearly this amount of protein. Okay, whether you use the meal plan template or not, these are the numbers. These two. The rest of it is doesn't matter. Okay. Obviously, if you use the meal plan template, it's perfect. You can't screw it up. If you don't, um, and you just want to track calories, this is your goal. All right. About sixteen ninety. Shoot for about one hundred and seventy grams of protein. That's it. All right. Compliance, 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 consistency, long game. That's what it's all about. All right? So despite what you have in your head, you're off to a great start. So we just need to stay the course and keep doing exactly what you're doing. Okay? You'll get there. It doesn't matter how long it takes. All right? Like I said, 90% compliance for 90 days, then you can complain your ass off to me about how much weight you've lost. If you haven't lost, you know, if you, if you haven't averaged uh, around a half a percent uh, over three months, then you can complain to me. All right. But remember, progress is going to show up in different ways at different times. If you're just going by the scale, you're going to drive yourself crazy. It's about a look and a feel. Who cares what you weigh if you don't look, if you don't like what you see back? Give you 150. Yeah, I could diet you down 150 pounds real quick. Uh, I could put you on an 1,100 calorie diet with no carbohydrates and have you do uh, 10 hours of cardio a week and lift weights five times a week. You'd hate the way you look. Trust me, you'd look flat. You'd lose a lot bunch of muscle. You wouldn't like it. All right. I don't really like seeing people losing weight at a clip exceeding about one uh, percent per week. Because if you're doing that, number one, you're going to be losing muscle with it. Number two, um, whatever you're doing to lose weight that fast is not sustainable. And you're not going to be able to keep it up. All right. Uh, in terms of your comment about fat weighing or muscle weighing more than fat, no, it doesn't. Uh, a pound is a pound. A pound of feathers weighs the same as a pound of rocks. The difference is, is that a pound of muscle is, uh, takes up less space and it's more compact. That's the only difference. That's why you want to hang on to muscle. All right, but in terms of it weighing more or less, it doesn't. A pound is a pound. All right, so I know that's very, very long, but these bi-weeklies are going to be long for the first six, eight weeks because there's a lot of undoing that needs to be done in terms of people's mindset and expectations. Then the bi-weeklies get a lot smoother and shorter, all right, because you'll be on point um, and acclimated to 
my style and the expectations, okay? That's all I got. Take note of the meal plan changes. You need to keep doing exactly what you're doing. Thanks.